I'll be Tracer. I'm already Tracer. What about Widowmaker? I'm already Widowmaker. I'll be Bastion. Nerf Bastion. <laughs> So, it's been a hot minute since I've last played Overwatch, roughly 2016-2017-ish to be exact, and a lot of things have changed. I also know a lot of you may try to discredit me, and that's fine, but when the Overwatch community predominantly doesn't understand why this game had to be made, who is truly gonna discredit who? To start things off, I'm gonna do my best not to be biased against Blizzard, because I honest to god do not like Blizzard. Mostly because of them now being involved with Activision and Activision... Well, who doesn't know what they've done at this point? Aside from that, Blizzard has done a lot of things that end up on the Grinch's shit list, such as pissing off the entire Diablo community with Diablo Immortal and insulting them by asking the golden question, Did you guys not have phones? Yeah. Ooh, uh, <laughs> that's tough. From that to the VP of Blizzard, Jeff Kaplan, stepping down. And why is he important? Because he was the face of Overwatch and was working on the second game, before he pieced out. Expect maximum quality with this one. I literally had no idea what to expect with Overwatch 2 until I kept hearing people say that it was essentially just an update. Hmm. A company releasing an update as a full game. I wonder what that reminds you of. Yeah, anyways. For some context, let's look at some comparisons given to us by Pro Game Guides just to see what's being added and taken away from Overwatch 1. I'll provide a link for the article down in the description. First off, they've scaled down the teams from 6 to 5. That's, that's such a weird thing to do. Admittedly, it's not game breaking, but choosing to downscale instead of upscaling is a bit of a weird choice. Second, they're adding a campaign, and I think YouTube has got you covered in this department, Blizzard. I, I seriously do. For real though, go to YouTube and type in something like Overwatch lore, and there are videos that range anywhere from 30 minutes to 2 hours. And yeah, I know there's going to be some enthusiasts pointing out that lore and a campaign are different, and this is where I'll mostly disagree but not entirely disagree. Let's look at the Halo series. That game has been around with us for over 20 years and the entirety of the lore can be covered across all the main games, except five. For the love of God, don't play five. I mean, even with the books, the podcasts, and all these other things, the lore is still accessible in the main games, but if you want some additional lore, you can go to the books and other outside sources. And if you want a reason why I said don't play five, uh, here's a TLDR. Uh, you would have had to listen to the podcast, read certain books, do the hokey pokey, and turn yourself around because going from 4 to 5 made no fucking sense. I don't understand why 343 had the goddamn audacity. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm working on the anger. Back to Overwatch. Third, they added a new game mode called Push, where you escort a robot to the enemy's side as it's pushing a machine or something. The mediocre gameplay on screen is showing off that game mode right now. And I literally suck more ass than a vacuum on a Friday night. You know, the kind of night where you look in the mirror and say you do you so hard. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Fuck me so hard. Now admittedly this mode is pretty fun. I mostly played healers so I was saving everyone else's ass while I was trying to move the robots to the objective. Overall, not that bad of a mode. Fourth, assault mode got removed. Now apparently assault mode was the worst in the community and I wouldn't know because I didn't play much of the first one. So I found someone on Reddit who posted something about this six years ago. Ooh, and they made a TLDR that states, On assault maps, if both teams have even points and one has extra time and the other doesn't, extra time will be awarded to the team that ran out of time even though they didn't earn it. <laughs> if a fucking participation trophy had a game mode, it's more than likely assault. I'm glad it's gone. Fifth and final, some of the characters have been tweaked. I wouldn't know because I could literally slap my monitor and it would have the same effect. The damn guns feel like they do nothing. So if the tweaks entailed each weapon feeling like I'm blowing air at my enemies, consider this a job well done. It states that Bastion, Doomfist, and Orisa, Oriza should watch out for tweaks. Like they know what the hell is gonna happen to them. Bastion is getting his turrets nerfed. Ariza or Ariza is getting a buff and Doomfist decided to peace out of the DPS class and become a tank. Now, the most important question of the hour. Did Overwatch 2 need to be made? No. 
No, it did not. Blizzard just showed the world that instead of continuously pushing updates for games that are doing well for them, they wanted to cash in on essentially what is an update. That's like if 343 released season two of Halo Infinite as its own damn game. Or after every update Activision does with Call of Duty, they just shift it into a new game. It makes little to no sense whatsoever. And if you think it does, I genuinely wanna know. I'm not gonna judge you. Well, at least not at the moment but I wanna know from the ride or dies of the community. As for my take, as an outsider of the series, just don't even bother. Besides, there are way better alternatives to these games like Paladins, and the game that is mostly responsible for kicking this genre off in the first place, Team Fortress 2. Granted, TF2 has a lot of bots, but the community servers are still being played and enjoyed by many of the community, and when they've added maps or new features, it did not warrant a whole new game. Don't even try to defend Blizzard either in this. I want to see them get hot under the pressure of the community. I want to see that snowstorm resolve into a puddle of water and realize that this is something that only they themselves think would be a good idea. And if we defend them for these actions, passing it off as, well it's okay, what's the harm in them releasing a new game with the same shit? Then we are encouraging Blizzard and other companies to do the same, milking the games that earn them the biggest net and reselling it to us at a higher price. I mean, I shouldn't be too hard on them. Even flies think that bright light is harmless until it zaps them. I hope you all did enjoy the video. If you could, please leave a like and sub to the channel. Apparently, I'm supposed to be hitting 500 subs by 2024. I'm not trying to wait two years. I know y'all probably aren't either. So yeah, consider hitting the sub button. I write, record, edit everything myself. This is a one-man operation. I think I'm doing a pretty good goddamn job. I also go live Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time over on Twitch. I will leave my link for that in the description down below. And I mostly play Phasmophobia, but we're going to get around to playing some more early access and indie games. So if that's right up your alley, come drop me a follow. I would love to have you there. And and as always, I'm your host with the most going live from overseas to coast to coast blackout going dark. I will see all of you in the next one. Keep it brutal. Keep each other safe. Until next time. Later.